Lord Jesus Christ be with you. It is good to see all of you uh, here today, despite the always rainy weather, it seems like it has, it has been for the last little while, but I'm sure that makes all many of you excited to get out in the gardens and see some greenery. We were digging up some weeds, my, my son and I, yesterday, and we encountered lots of bugs and a lot of dirtiness and messiness, but having taken out some weeds, our floor bed is looking a little bit more presentable. I'm sure nothing compared to many of the beautiful uh, landscaping that some of you may be doing at home, um, but hopefully we are all looking forward to some main flowers. Um, this morning I just have a couple of announcements. The first is regarding the annual cemetery cleanup, so speaking of the coming of spring and spring cleaning. Um, our first cleanup will be at the First Church Cemetery, which is not too far from here, on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, uh, May 3rd at 9 a.m., uh, with a barbecue lunch that will be served around 12 across the street. Uh, the second cleanup is at the St. Andrew's Wyville Cemetery, which will be on Thursday, so the following week, Thursday, May 11th at 9 a.m. as well. William Knight Bridge. Y Bridge. Y Bridge. Y Bridge Cemetery. Is there a Y Bill Cemetery? Yeah. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> um, secondly, secondly, our presbytery, uh, the presbytery of Barrie will be sending a visitation team. Um, once again, this is just a routine visitation that happens at every church within the presbytery. Uh, typically around once in every five years, and so we will be welcoming them next week. If you have any questionnaires that you have filled out, please do not forget to leave them in the envelope outside. If you have not yet filled out a questionnaire, I think there are still a few blank ones over there, and you can take some time today. It's not very long, um, so you can take some time today after the service to fill that out for all of our members and adherents. On the same day, we will also be having the baptism of Rosalie Hoopers, um, and so we are uh, excitedly looking forward to that as well. Um, I believe the mission committee also has an announcement for us. <coughs> to attend the fundraiser for Water First at 12 p.m. following the service. A cold ham luncheon will be served, and tickets will be sold in advance for $20. The luncheon will include salad and dessert, coffee, tea, and of course, water. We will also provide this luncheon as a takeaway, if that's what works best for you. So please note, let us know in advance to allow us to prepare accordingly. Thank you for your support. Now, I'm not sure if we still decided to do this, but there was some discussion that if you wanted to go downstairs for anything short of coffee or cookies on that day, um, you would still need to buy a luncheon. It's, I don't know if that's true or not, but please keep that in mind. You have to work. morning, let's gather our hearts before the Lord as we come to worship Him. Uh, let us bow our heads in a moment of silence as I read the call to worship taken from Psalm 16. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With Him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your hand. Let us worship the Lord our God. We join together as we sing our first hymn, number 569, Oh Jesus, I Have Promised, singing all verses.
Thank you, Lord, for you are a good and faithful and patient God, merciful and filled with mercy and grace and truth. May we understand the depths of the ways that we have fallen short of your glory, so that we may stand truly in awe of your love and live forever praising you. In Jesus' name we pray. This time, can I invite the children to come join me here at the front? So we're going to add those, and then we're going to sing a song together. So 
From the beginning, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and then Get, Get. which is Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. One more time, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Great. Now we're going to sing a song today um, called, well, depends on who you ask. Some people call the song Children of the Lord. Some people call it Rise and Shine. Uh, some people call it Arky Arky. The Arky Arky. Arky Arky. Arky Arky. So our children, we've sung this a few times at home, so you're going to have to sing nice and loud. But we're going to teach you the chorus first. Um, and the chorus... The words is, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. And then you repeat that, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Children of the Lord. So the chorus would be, and rise.
It was a big door. The elephant. They made a big door so that the elephant could go into the ark because the ark was so big. <laughs> um, and then eventually, after many, many, many days on the water, on the flooded uh, earth, uh, the, the sun came out and all the water started receding and they were all able to come out safely. So this Two is... Questions. Yes. Uh, when they're on the boat, um, what do they eat? They, ate, they prepared all the food necessary for, for the animals and for the people. Uh, when they're in the boat, or did they puke of the... Did they get seasick? I would imagine so. I would get seasick. That's a long time to be on the boat. Animals get seasick too, so it's very possible. That's a good question. I hadn't thought that one. <laughs> Let's take some time to pray. Could you repeat after me? Dear Lord, we thank you for the story of Noah and all the stories in the Bible that remind us of your holiness, that remind us of your glory, that remind us of your power. Remind us of your power. And that remind us of your love. And that remind us of your love. May we remember these stories. May we remember these stories. All the days of our lives. All the days of our lives. So we may grow up. So we may grow up. Trusting in you. Trusting in you. Always faithful to you. Always faithful to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Testament, Jonah, chapter 1, verse 17, 
And then chapter 2, you can find this on page 860 in your pew Bible. You have to remember that Jonah is trying to run away from God. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. A psalm of thanksgiving. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and all your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life, and deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. At the roots of the mountains, I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit. O oh Lord my God, when my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. Those who pray, who pay regard, regard to vain idols, forsake their hope for steadfast love. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish and he vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. The second reading is from Acts, chapter 2, verses 23 to 32. And this can be found on page 119 in the New Testament section in your pew Bible. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and for knowledge of God you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced, my flesh also will dwell in hope. For you I will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your holy one see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn him with him an oath, that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Our red letter reading is taken from Matthew chapter 16, verses 2 to 4. Matthew chapter 16, verses 2 to 4. He answered them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and an adulterous generation seek for a sign, seeks for a sign, 
but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. This is the word of the Lord. Let's join our voices together as we sing our hymn, uh, our second hymn, number 476, Friends of Christ and Eagles de Cristo. <laughs> Truly, who could ever run away from the will 
of the Almighty God. Who could ever deny the character of God, full of grace and truth? The grace of God, which desired to see the people of Nineveh saved from judgment. The truth of God, which called them to repent of their ways and turn to him. And so on this boat, a storm comes, and the sailors panic, each praying to their own gods. But ultimately, it is Jonah who begins to see how pointless it is for him to run away from God's will. He knows that God has been the same yesterday, today, and forever. He knows that God's will, therefore, could never be denied. There was not much point in trying to run away, and so he tells the sailors that it is his fault that this storm has come. And he says, throw me into the sea if, the de if they desire to live. And even reluctantly, they do so, and the storm dissipates. Jonah at this moment, though, chooses death rather, rather than obedience. Jonah would rather die than see the people of Nineveh saved. And while he is as good as dead, of course, God's will remains to be done. And so the Lord sends a great fish and swallows Jonah. And for three days he is given time to think things through. I wonder if this image was the inspiration for a scene in Pinocchio. When Geppetto and Pinocchio find themselves in the belly of a whale. I don't know if that's a fact or not. But those were always the images that I carried growing up of Jonah sitting on a wooden raft in the middle of the belly of a great fish. But I doubt it was as comfortable as that. Eventually, he prays. I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice, for you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me, the weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever, yet you brought me up, brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love, but I, with the voice of thanksgiving of all things, I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And as he says his prayer, the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. Salvation belongs to the Lord. This is the crux of the gospel of the will of God, of all of Scripture, of everything that we talk about here. Salvation belongs to the Lord from the beginning to the end. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And while the book of Jonah is a story that speaks of this, it is Jesus who embodies it in his birth, in his life, in his ministry, in his death, and in his resurrection. Ascension. In John chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus comes as the living embodiment of the will of God, the glory of God, full of grace and truth. The gift, the grace that gives salvation to all who believe in him. The truth that calls all to turn from their disobedient ways in repentance. This is the grace that desires, to, uh, desires all to be saved and to find life in him. This is the truth that condemns sin and calls us to a higher way of life. 
in obedience to God's will. Today we read of the second time Jesus refers to Jonah in response to being asked by the Pharisees to show them a sign. However, this time is a little unique that in that it is the Pharisees and the Sadducees who come together to ask him for these signs. These two groups were powerful groups. These two powerful groups within the Jewish community were actually not very fond of one another. They were religious leaders and political leaders who did not like each other very much because they believed in slightly different things. They were two religious sects within Judaism and viewed scripture differently. They believed different things, they, and they were the ruling class of the Jewish people. They did not get along. And yet here we see them together, united by a common goal, a common goal of testing and rejecting Jesus as the Messiah. And so they come to test him, and they ask him to show them a sign from heaven. A couple of weeks ago, we looked at, among other things, how the disciples may have shied away from asking Jesus to multiply the few loaves of bread and fish that they had to feed the crowd of over 4,000 people. Perhaps because they did not want to look like those who were always asking for signs. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were joining forces for once because they were not happy with Jesus. They asked for a sign from heaven, not something that seemed possible, like healing, which they had heard he had done or maybe even seen him. They asked for a sign that seems impossible, not because they expected him to do it, not because they wanted him to do it, because, not because they want to believe him to be the Son of God, but pre precisely because they did not believe he was capable. Jesus knew this, that they were testing him, and they wanted to see him fail. And Jesus replies to them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You, now, you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them. Department. <clears throat> Jesus makes the point that they know how to take the same sign and uh, interpret it depending on the time of day. But they do not know how to interpret the signs of the times. They are called an evil and adulterous generation because they do not truly follow the will and the law of God. These faithless individuals <coughs> Demand a sign not because they believe in him, the word made flesh, but because they desire in their pride to prove that they were the ones who were right. They did not know how to interpret, they did not know how to interpret the signs of the times, Jesus says. In other words, they did not look to the scriptures and believe in his word and see that Jesus was and had come in accordance to God's word and will. They do not see how Jesus has not only come, but truly has been fulfilling the prophecies of the Messiah. They reject him and refuse to see him as the Son of God. And so Jesus says they will be given only one sign, the sign of Jonah. Just like Jonah was in the belly of this great fish, pretty much dead for three days, Jesus descends and dies, and three days later would rise from the dead. While Jesus, like Jonah, would be brought to the depths of death, and three days later rise from the dead, and while, like Jonah, Jesus would rise with a message full of grace and truth, Unlike Jonah, Jesus would, from beginning to end, 
be fully obedient and willing to follow the unchanging will of the Father. When I read the book of Jonah, I see myself in him. People who are unable to fully live in obedience and accordance to God's will. Jonah's prayer in the belly reflected repentance and surrender to the Lord, surrender to God's will. It was a prayer lifted up in distress, and in his repentance the Lord saves him from the belly of the fish. Jonah's prayer was said in the face of death. It was a prayer in which Jonah gives up his selfish pride and gives in to the will of God. He lays down his own will and even from the belly of a fish says, I, with a voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I am vowed I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Now Jesus, before he is betrayed, in the hands of those who would have him crucified, also prayed a prayer. And in that prayer, we hear the humble obedience of the Son to the Father, who says, Not my will, but yours be done. While Jonah, in his disobedience, would flee from God's will, God's will is always ultimate, and God's character of grace and truth would always prevail. While Jonah fled from God's will, full of arrogance, pride, and unwillingness, Jesus, the Son of God, lived in full and humble obedience. While Jonah would need to be swallowed by a fish before he would turn from his ways, Jesus would live he would live into the definite plan and foreknowledge of God perfectly and fully with humility and passion. Through a reluctant yet repentant Jonah, God would save the people of Nineveh. Through a fully faithful and obedient son, full of grace and truth, God would come to save the world. In Acts chapter 2, verse 23, we read about this Jesus who was delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. Someone that the people crucified and killed by our own hands. It reads that God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your holy one see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. The people of Nineveh were not given much when you think about it. They did not hear great teachings, nor did they see great signs or miracles. They were presented simply with the truth. Forty more days and Nineveh will be overthrown, was the message recorded in the Bible. But this truth proved to be enough to cause them to believe and have faith, to turn from their evil ways begin to fast and cause the whole nation to repent, and thus receiving the grace of God who would, according to his unchanging will, respond to their re repentance with a promise of salvation. Now, brothers and sisters, we might look for signs in this life. We might look for reasons to believe. We might want to see healing or signs in heaven. We might want to feel certain things in our worship. We might want to experience some, something new to reveal God to us. We might want to have great spiritual experiences in this life. Because we think or feel that if we saw those things, then maybe we would know for sure that this was all real and true. Or maybe... 
according to our doubts, we would know for sure that it was all a lie from the beginning. But brothers and sisters, the scriptures is telling us today, truly the only sign we need is the resurrected Christ. The only sign that is needed and we know to be true because of the true testimony and witness of the scriptures, which is the unchanging, authoritative, inerrant, true word of God, is that Jesus Christ, full of grace and truth, died and rose again, so that you might have salvation. That is the greatest of all miracles, that is the most wondrous of all God's deeds. Jesus comes in grace and truth, extending his grace to us so that we might find forgiveness and life, revealing his truth to us so that we might know how to live faithfully to him. While Jonah in the veritable belly of death lifted in his distress a prayer of repentance and thanksgiving, perhaps the question we can ask ourselves today is, what kind of prayer, prayer do we lift up to the Lord in the face of new life given to us in Christ? What kind of prayer do we lift up when the Lord would save us from eternal damnation and death? What kind of prayer do we lift up to the Lord when He has already saved us in Jesus Christ? For we have seen the sign and we know that it is true. Jesus, the Son of God, the Word made flesh, was born on this earth so that we might know Him. And this very Jesus Christ bore the weight of our sins to die upon the cross, to put to death our shame. And then Jesus has rose again to give us new life in which we may be clothed in Christ's righteousness and live with certainty and confidence that we are the beloved, holy children of our Heavenly Father. Brothers and sisters, what then, what prayer do we then lift up to a God so full of grace and so full of truth on this day? Amen. Let us bow in a word of prayer. We, O oh Lord, despite ourselves, are counted amongst the poor and broken and the hurting. We are the sick and the hungry and the thirsty. You have received us in your abundant grace and love. And for this we ought to know a never-ending joy in your Son. Your Son came to us in glory to give us your grace, but also to teach us to live in your truth. But we know that there are many ways in which we have turned our backs on your will, and we have chosen to run away. Sometimes we seek for signs, and sometimes your truth scares us. But we ask that at this moment, we may look to you, O resurrected Jesus Christ, our Savior, King, and Lord, and know that you are more than enough. You are more than all that we need. You are the answer to all our prayers. You are everything. So may you be our everything. Be our strength. Be our hope and our guide. We also pray for those who need you, especially those amongst us, our friends and our families who need your strength in our exhaustion, in our frustration, in our helplessness. We pray for them as we pray for our enemies and adversaries. We pray for them as we pray for the lost and oppressed, for those in the margins, and 
and for those in power. Let them know your hope, peace, and joy. And in a moment of silence, may we lift up their names and our names as well. For Lord, we need you. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we give you thanks, for we know that you hear our prayers, and we know that you are already at work. For everything that we have presented before you, our tithes, our gifts, our offerings, may you breathe upon it and use it for your goodwill and your good work. Heavenly Father, we know that your will is ultimate, and despite of us, in, in spite of us, your will shall be done. And so use it to continue your ministry. For those of us who are unable to give or wish we could give more, receive our hearts as an act of worship that is pleasing and acceptable to you, we humbly pray. All these things we lift to your name as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, as we have presented our offering before the Lord, uh, let us sing together the doxology.
Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of his Holy Spirit, and the glory of our Heavenly Father go with you wherever you go. Walk with you and sustain you and uphold you as you go to fulfill the very purpose for which you were created. Recall that are now being sent. Go. Oh, okay.